All right. So good morning. Welcome back to uh, Yoga with Catherine, Flow with Catherine. Um, thanks so much for making the adjustment to 10 a.m. today. It will also be 10 a.m. next week. And then we go back to, I mean, 1 p.m. or whatever works for the majority of all of you. So to keep it brief, um, today we are taking last week's program that I had to unfortunately cancel, and we're going to bring it into today. So we're just going to focus on hip openers and sort of these wide legged positions, a lot of warriors, um, just to, you know, feel, um, feel a sense of strength as we maybe just start our early morning. To me, it's early morning, <laughs> morning routines, getting kind of in our bodies, feeling a sense of stability, grounding, um, alertness, which could be really nice to feel refreshed by the end of the class and to get into the rest of the day. I might use some sort of vague chakra imagery just to help guide some of um, some of our focus, which might be nice for some of you. Um, and yeah, so let's start with just like some breathing. Let's like wake up if you're like me and you woke up like three minutes ago. So let's come on to our mats. Easy seat as always. So um, pillow under your seat, whatever you like to kind of sink in. And for the next 45 minutes, we're going to tap into a steady, peaceful breath. If at any point you notice sort of rushing or panting of your breath, that's a nice moment. <laughs> that's a nice reflective moment to say, hey, let me take a step back. What is kind of causing the energy to come out in these spurts, which sometimes is good for us to feel heat, but for today, we really want to ground in and feel stable. So let's begin by finding our alignment. So begin to send the back of the head right over the tip of the spine, over the heart, over the pelvis, roll back the shoulders, begin to notice your breath. Sometimes when we breathe kind of intentionally in the beginning, it feels a little bit forced or a little bit phony, like I'm not dropped in. Just let that be what it may. It will become more natural as you continue to move and breathe. Just make it deliberate. So maybe with lips closed, breathe in deeply through your nose, feel the breath traveling down your spine, landing in the belly, and then release through your open mouth. If you'd like, you can send one hand to your heart and the other to your belly to sort of feel the motions that accompany the breath. Just begin breathing in through your nose and maybe even longer on the exhale through your mouth. Eyes can be open or closed. Just take a couple moments to yourself. And at the bottom of your next exhale, begin to blink your eyes open. Bring your hands to prayer, Anjali Mudra, right in front of your heart, heart chakra, the chakra symbolizing love, connection with others, relationships. You just send some intention to those themes. Breathe into the love that you may feel in your life with the people around you, maybe critters in your life the care you send back to them with everything you do. And I know a lot of you have a lot of animals that we spend a lot of time caring for. Just take a moment to acknowledge the cycle of love and care between you and those you care about. And then on your next inhale, breathe, reach those arms up, just get a stretch overhead. And then exhale, just flow the fingers down, making little half circles with each hand. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, like raindrops, literally wiggling my fingers, kind of getting my hands a little gently activated. One more time, deepest breath. And exhale, lower down. Excellent. And just take one more moment to sit in this comfortable seat, feel the back of your body, alert and strong, front body fills with air, and just become aware of the crown of your head. Can we make it parallel with the ceiling? This is the crown chakra, the one associated with intuition, with that 
which is outside of yourself, almost as if the energy is lifting beyond your head and just inhabiting the space around. And exhale, lower the shoulders. And let's begin our flow. So I'm gonna just turbo become flow, Catherine. Whoa. All right, come on to your hands and knees. And we're going to come into our cat and cow. So palms underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips, and begin your flow. So inhale, belly drops, gaze lifts. Try to keep length in the neck rather than stretching it too far back. And then exhale, rounding the spine, gaze towards your knees. And then find your own rhythm, tapping back into that steady, peaceful breath. Warming up the spine, engaging the shoulder blades, engaging the core. And really thinking root to crown. So pelvic floor, this root chakra initiates the movement and the movement concludes shining out the crown of your head. This motion really travels up these chakras from lower spine out the top of your head. And maybe it's helpful to even imagine like a line of you know, light or color from the tailbone, up the spine, up the neck, and out the crown of your neck. Oh, sorry, crown of your head, not crown of your neck. And take any other movements that you like. Pelvic floor symbolizing security, a sense of safety. And as we feel a little more embodied, start waking things up, let's come into a nice, easy downward dog. So you're not trying to reach your max here. You're just settling in. So tuck those toes, feel the stretch in the toes, plant the hands just ahead of your shoulders, and then begin to lift the knees as the hips rise. Knees can be as bent as you like, and begin to find motion that helps you ultimately step, settle into some stillness. Maybe you pedal out the feet. Maybe you come to the tops of the toes and take a gentle rock. And when you're ready, gaze towards your knees, deep breath in and full sigh out. Take one more like that deep inhale and let it all out with a sigh. <sighs> Wonderful. I'm gonna gaze forward and walk the feet towards the hands, nice and steady. Feet can be hip width distance apart, knees can be bent, and just hang. Take whatever feels good here. You can reach opposite elbows. <sighs> Excellent, release those hands. Gripping through those feet, feel the rooting in the feet as you begin to rise. Feet engaged, toes engaged, and the rest just sort of unfolds. Shoulders back, I'm gonna turn to face you. Reach the arms up, tall mountain. Exhale, palms come together, hands come to heart, eyes can close. Take a moment, hands in front of that heart chakra. Again, just dipping a toe into the love that maybe you have experienced in your life or that which you hope others experience in their lives. And when you're ready, blink open the eyes. If you've turned out, come back to the short edge of your mat, bend your knees, reach your arms up and let us flow. So exhale, leading with that heart, come on down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands can be wherever on your legs feel good. Exhale, forward fold. <sighs> Steady breath. Inhale to plant the hands. Step one foot back and then the other. Gently lower the knees and just feel into the position here. Belly button towards spine. Shoulders over wrists. Neck is long rather than dropped. Inhale to shift that heart between your arms. Exhale, lower down, leading with the chest, elbows bending at your rib cage, and press up, untuck the toes. Baby cobra, high cobra, upper dog, whatever you like here. Deep breath. 
and then exhale, move it on back into your downward facing dog. Excellent. Deep breath in. Let it out with a sigh. <sighs> like a big tumult of breath. One more time. Inhale deeply. Lift those hips. And exhale with a sigh. <sighs> we're going to begin to lift our right heel in the air. We're going to turn out the knee to the right side and just bend the knee so that the heel is going towards our left butt cheek. And really press back with that left arm so we don't bend into the left side. But we're strong between both arms, opening that right hip. Breathe here. And then on the exhale, square those hips. You're going to step the right foot between the left hands. Uh, plant the left heel on the ground. Inhale, warrior one. Take a deep breath. Square the hips. So right hip pulls back, left hip forward. Lower the shoulders. Reach the arms up. Take one more breath. Feel the rib cage pulling back in towards the uh, spine. And then exhale. Let it go. Plant the hands on either side of the foot. Turn out the back foot so it's square. Step it back. Knees can lower. Move through your chaturanga. Ooh, untuck the toes. Maybe you're moving a little higher. And then exhale nice and steady. No rush. Move on back into that downward facing dog. Two cycles of breath here. Feel on the exhale that the hips lift. Excellent. We're going to now begin to lift. I'm just moving so I don't hit the window. Lift the left heel. Turn out the knee and just let the heel drop towards the right butt cheek. <laughs> Nothing like butt cheek at 10 a.m. Press the right arm into the floor as much as the left hand. And on an exhale, square the hips and send that foot through the hands. Might take one or a couple of steps. Turn out the back foot to a 45 degree angle. Plant the heel. When you feel good, whoo, rise up. Arms might come up. If you'd like to keep them at your hips for now, that's absolutely fine. Bend in the front leg. Gently guide the left hip back so that both hips are facing forward. Deep inhale, reach up and out into the heavens. Deep breath in. And then exhale is where you let it all go. Release those hands to frame the front leg. Square the hips, step the front leg back, and move through a chaturanga. When you have finished your chaturanga, we're gonna go into a child's pose. So whenever you get there, send it on back. Take a breath. Fill your body with air, with breath, with motion. With every breath, you expand and contract. You get this flow inside your body, as well as the flow that we're doing in yoga. Let the forehead just hang or rest on the floor. And then inhale, lifting from that lower belly to press you into tabletop. Let's come into downward. So walk the hands forward, tuck those heels, and just send those hips up. Oh, yes. Feel the heat that might be rushing towards your face and around your ears from just being upside down. We're gonna inhale that right heel one more time. Exhale, turn it out, drop it towards your, your, um, your booty. If you'd like to go a little further, you can continue dropping it so much that your right hand lifts up and your right foot comes down into a little wild thing. You can take the top arm wherever you want, up or out. Hips still lifting. Then exhale, wherever you are, come back into that three-legged dog. Lift that right heel up, square the hips. Step it through the hands, one or several steps. Take a moment. And then exhale, turn out the back foot, 45 degree angle, warrior one. Good. This time, find something just ahead of you to focus your gaze on momentarily. Take a breath in. And then exhale, open the back foot so it's pointing out, come into your warrior two and make any adjustments so your knee is over your ankle, your front foot bisects the back, and your torso is right in the middle. You have this like center axis, north, south, 
uh, coordinates. Gaze over the right fingers. Good. Inhale to reverse that warrior. Just an easy stretch. Gaze is up. Next breath, come back to warrior two. Find this lunge. Take a breath in. Next exhale, forearm comes to front leg. Supported extended side angle. On your next inhale, warrior two. Exhale, plant, windmill the hands down, plant them on either side. Uh, unto, uh, square the hips. Send the right foot back to meet the left. Move through your chaturanga. And exhale, downward facing dog. From here, you're gonna step the feet towards your hands, bend the knees, feet are touching. Bend the knees nice and deeply as we swing the arms out and forward, chair pose. Take a look at your toes, can you see them? You want to be able to see them so you know you're not leaning too far forward. Maybe you can even lift the toes to make sure that the weight is evenly distributed through the sole of the foot. And a gentle tuck of the tailbone, nothing forced, just a gentle engagement. One more breath. Stand up tall on the exhale and let the energy flow down. Forward fold, well done. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up one vertebrae at a time. Take a breath with the arms up. Exhale, palms come together. Take a second. <sighs> Hands at your heart. <sighs> Wonderful. And we're gonna start again, reach those arms out and up. Exhale, send it forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Um, inhale, start to plant the hands, step one foot back and then the other and find a chaturanga. Knees can always drop, especially if you're, you know, you're expecting to do a couple of push-ups. Make sure you kind of save your gas for the last. You really conserve your energy in the beginning so you can um, have some continue, uh, continuity through your practice. Send it on up into downward dog. Take two full cycles of breath. Find your peaceful breath. And when you're ready, other side. We're gonna inhale, left heel up. Turn it out, bend it towards your butt. If you wanna stay here, just feel this hip opener, feel free. Or if you wanna ooh, <laughs> continue, drop that foot. Lift the hips high in the sky, wild thing. You make my heart sing. When you're ready, flip it on back over, three-legged dog. And then you're gonna step that foot in between, take a second, it's a lot of energy there. And then when you're ready, turn out the back foot on a 45 degree angle, bend in the front leg directly over your ankle, warrior one. I'm gonna turn around so I'm still facing you. <laughs> Good, square the hips. Feel the lower ribs kind of pulling in and it will engage the core just ever so slightly, keeping us activated and protecting our lower back. And whenever you find an exhale, come into your warrior two. Check all your alignment, make any small adjustments, gaze over left finger, left fingers. Take a moment, look at something in the distance. Almost think third eye, the space between, uh, between and above your eyebrows. The third eye being a space of imagination, of opening and perception. Future, looking towards the future, but also dropping vertically into the present, all sorts of stuff. Just take a moment, get into your third eye, zen. Take a breath. And then exhale, notice the focus changes as you reverse your warrior, get a nice stretch up the left side. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, so extended side angle. Stay for a breath. Inhale, warrior two. 
Find that focus again, third eye, perception. And on your next exhale, windmill the hands down, frame the front foot, step it back. Move through your chaturanga. And we'll meet in our downward facing dog. From here, look forward, step, hop, float, whatever you like to do to get to the top. Feet touching, bend the knees deeply like you're sitting on a chair that's just a little too high. Reach those arms back and up, downhill skier style, except you reverse the arms. And a gentle tuck of the tailbone, lift the toes. Can you see the toes? And then gaze out and up. One more breath, can we sit a little lower? We could, we could sit a little lower. And then on the next, exhale, rise and fall. Gonna inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. And then inhale, root through those feet, grip with the toes. Roll on up, woo. Tall mountain. Exhale, hands to heart. I'm gonna just turn around again. Take a moment with your hands in heart. Feel your breath returning to a natural, peaceful place. Excellent. From here, we're gonna face the short edge of the mat. We're gonna bend our knees, reach our arms up, and exhale, dive forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward. We're gonna bend our knees. And we're gonna step one foot back and then the other. If you'd like to move through a flow, you can take it. Otherwise, just meet in your downward dog. We're gonna lift our right heel a little bit into the air. And we're gonna step it on the outside of the right hand. Turn out the toes to the right on a 45 degree angle and find your lizard. This might be great. You may wanna drop your knee. Maybe once you find length in that spine, you want to take that length down a little bit further. I know this might be your first yoga practice of the day. <laughs> I certainly know it's my only yoga practice of the day. So take it easy. If you do other things, you may have really, let me rephrase that. If you spend a lot of time sitting, you may have tight hamstrings. If you spend a lot of time standing, you might have tight hamstrings. If you run, tight hamstrings. If you don't run, you probably have tight hamstrings. <laughs> hamstrings do not like to stay limber. So take it easy. If it feels good to use your right hand on your thigh and gently guide the knee slightly out to the corner, you take this wherever you want. And on the exhale, feel that settling downhill motion. Even if you're not actually sinking any lower to the ground, kind of just feel the relaxing of the muscles here. Wonderful. And nice and steady, plant both hands on the inside of that right leg. Lift the back knee, step it back. We're just gonna lift the hips into downward, take a full, deep breath. And a full exhale. Inhale the left heel, and we're gonna do the lizard on the other side. Step it on the outer edge of the left hand. Take it easy. This is a lot on the hip as well. We have tight hips for lots of reasons too. Take wherever you need. Toes slightly turned out. You can even gently guide the knee slightly to the left. Find length in the spine before you move on to any other variation of this. And so, Good, 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 good. And just while we are really working hips, hamstrings, fat, <laughs> working the legs, um, let's just pay attention to our upper body for a second. Can you, if you're on your forearms, press into those elbows to uh, make sure you're not collapsing into your shoulder blades. If you're on your hands, press into the palms as well to give your back a little bit more structure. And no matter where you are, can you send your heart a little bit more forward? In doing that, you may actually feel more sensation in the groin, in the hips. 
And on an exhale, begin to plant your hands, palms on the ground, lift the back leg, step it back, and move through a chaturanga if you'd like. And for downward facing dog, we're gonna slowly walk the hands towards the feet. Just hang, hang loose. Feel the weight of the head, kind of gently guiding your body forward towards your knees. You can always bend those knees as well. And when you're ready, root to rise, roll on up. Oh, excellent. I took, <laughs> took a shower, which was like revolutionary, but it makes my hair very wispy. <laughs> like swatting it away. All right, so we are gonna come into a chair squat. So if you have any knee issues, take the squat very uh, carefully. And if you don't wanna do the squat, find something else. You can redo something we've done already, something else that feels good. So we're going to have um, our feet for this chair hip width distance apart. If you wanna put a block between your legs, so between your thighs so your knees don't knock in, that's fine. Otherwise, really feel the inner thighs pressing out to avoid this sort of knocking in. You're gonna really feel it in your muscles. Toes pointing forward, bend your knees, reach your arms back, sit on that fake chair, <sighs> gaze up. And really, again, feel you're resisting the knees coming in towards each other. Gentle tuck of the tailbone, roll the shoulders back, send the heart forward. Two more breaths here. Make any refinements, any adjustments. On your last breath, is there anything else you want to reach or feel here? And then inhale, arms up. You're gonna step the legs up just a little more like to your shoulders. Turn out the toes, palms come together. And we're gonna bend into our yogi squat. You might need to adjust your feet. The idea is just roll back the shoulders and sit those hips down in between. You may have something more like this. Your heels might want to come up. Just find a place that feels um, that you don't feel pain and a place where maybe you can send your heart a little bit more forward. Take a breath and on an exhale, engage those inner thighs. Ugh, try to lift. That's gonna, yeah, you might feel little pins and needles a little bit. We're gonna do that two more times. So just prepare, inhale, heart lifts. Exhale, sit. Maybe don't collapse into your squat because you know you're going to rise again. So feel that little bit of suspension and come up. Whew, tuck that uh, tailbone ever so slightly. Last one. You know class is almost over when we're doing these kinds of things. And exhale. Whew, come on in. Again, if your hands want to come to the floor, that's a-okay. Take a moment. Again, this is real root chakra. Action, the pelvic floor, stability, grounding, literally your body reaching closer to the earth as the crown of the head reaches out and up. And then exhale, we're gonna carefully plant our hands behind us to support our falling, our, our dropping our booty to the earth. Just shake out your legs. Ooh, shake out your shoulders. Excellent. And then notice the quality of your breath. Can it become more restful, more restorative? Wonderful. So now we're gonna just plant the soles of the feet on the ground. I'm gonna take my left leg and gently place the outer shin on the floor. No fancy placement. My right leg, I'm gonna step it over the knee. So left shin is just bent on the ground. Right foot, I just step it on the outside of that knee. Use your fingertips on the floor to lift your chin. And then exhale, hug that leg in to your heart a little bit. My front foot lifts off the ground when I do that. You're just getting a nice little uh, compression in that hip. Excellent. And then plant that foot back on the ground. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, you can hug that um, leg in for the twist, or you can kind of press against it as you twist your body to the right side. Try to feel length in the back and try your best to keep the shoulder blades in their sockets. It's really easy to like kind of press them out here, especially if you're pushing against the leg. So make any adjustments to keep everything aligned. 
And then on an exhale, unwind, shake out those legs. We're gonna do the opposite side, the other side. So right leg just drapes on the floor. Knee is coming straight out from the hip. Left leg steps over. Just give yourself a little snug hug. Oh, knees, you work so hard. I've damaged you so, I'm sorry. Good, and then we're gonna plant the um, hands on either side to get some lift. <sighs> and then inhale, right arm up. Option to twist by hugging the leg, twisting to the left, sending those shoulder blades back. Or you can resist either one. They, it gives you different benefits. You might feel the hug more in the hip and the, um, the press more in the lower back. Really is just you picking one and sticking to it and exploring what's there. Gaze can go towards the left shoulder. And then use that third eye to kind of look beyond the left shoulder. What's in the distance? What's come before you? What might come next? And what's coming now again and again and again? Kind of piecing together our lives literally moment by moment. Take one final breath in this twist. And on an exhale, whew, just relax it all, unwind. We're gonna come onto our bellies now. So carefully untangle the legs, take any little movements you need on the way down. <laughs> come down to your bellies in a way far more graceful and gentle than what I just did. And take a locust. <sighs> so let's warm up our locust. We had a couple of these upward dogs and, and cobras, which is a very similar shape of our spine. We're gonna keep the tops of the feet planted for the first round. You're gonna clasp your hands behind your back, forehead on the floor. Take a deep breath in, shoulder blades come together. And on the exhale, lift the shoulders, lift the forehead, lift the, the hands, press the hands towards the heels. Feel the engagement of the lower back. One more breath in, exhale, melt it down. <sighs> We're gonna do that two more times. Um, these next two, we're gonna lift the feet as well as the shoulders. See what it brings. So extend the arms long, clasp hands, forehead to the ground, deep breath in, shoulder blades come together. On the next exhale, peel everything away except those hips and maybe the thighs are still a little bit on the ground. Good, squeeze the glutes. You might even notice the feet coming slightly closer together when you do squeeze the glutes. And then exhale, melt, place a cheek on the ground, find peaceful breath. You're always calm, cool, and collected, even when it's like a really intense posture. You come back to the breath, you come back to yourself. And final one, find your position, forehead on the ground, shoulder blades coming together, inhale. And exhale. Whew. Can you find something new in this third one? Can you maybe pull the hands a little closer towards the heels? Or maybe you find more length in your neck or you squeeze your glutes a little more, hold it for one deep inhale and slowly on the exhale, release. Whoa. Good, just lift the feet and gently rock from side to side. Hands can be wherever, feel supportive. Wonderful. And now we're just gonna roll over onto our backs. Soles of the feet on the ground, shoulder blades flat against the earth. You're gonna take the right foot, cross the ankle over thigh. You're gonna reach your hands, right hands through that little triangle you made. And you can reach back of the thigh, uh, left thigh, or you can reach for the shin. And gently lay the head back down. Feel into this figure four shape, hip opening on the right side. You can take any small motions if you like a gentle rock. Some people like to lift their leg up and down. Keeping both feet flexed and watch the sickling of the ankle. So keeping the toes coming straight out from the ankle without dipping side to side. Good. Two more breaths here. Take your time. And then on an exhale, release the feet back to the floor, gentle windshield wiper legs. Ah, 
I'm taking the curtain. And then other side, left ankle crosses over right thigh. Reach those hands through, reach for shin or um, hamstring. Send your head back, uh, back flat against the floor. And you control the, the volume here. You control the intensity. So more squeezing, you might feel more in the hip. Less squeezing, you might feel less. So you take it wherever you feel uh, you need it the most or that you want it. Let your breath continue to be con uh, steady, consistent. When you notice the breath um, falling out of rhythm with your body, maybe make adjustments in your body so the breath can catch up. One more inhale. And exhale, slowly release. Gentle windshield wiper, legs. And then we're just gonna take the knees in for a hug. Let the head rest on the ground, open the arms like a cactus or a T and just let the knees drop to one side. Gaze can be over opposite shoulder if you like. Feel the release here. Really tell your body, relax. Relax, now is the time to integrate everything we have done so that we may move forward with sort of all the lessons learned from practicing. Our body's more open, hopefully, our breath more steady, maybe our mind's a little more at bay. And inhale, let those knees move past center and let them drop to the other side. Gaze can be over other shoulder. Eyes can always close. Here you're twisting at the solar plexus chakra right in the, uh, behind the navel, right around the navel area. Tapping back into a sense of grounding, a sense of intuition. You know who you are, even when you receive so many conflicting messages from everybody and everything and every social media, there is still a sense of you in there. And that's what makes you precisely unique from anybody else. So as we kind of squeeze into this lower belly, this you know, solar plexus chakra. Maybe we can just like sort of smile at who you are. Like, I, I see you in there. You're you, I, I know who you are. As <laughs> so I get like super meta. Just take a moment, acknowledge yourself. And then inhale, knees come up. And then if you want to take any other move, any other motion, happy baby or then nothing, you know, you can go into shoulder stance or you can simply begin to find your Shavasana. So when you are ready, let yourself slowly, like you're moving in outer space, just sort of slowly let the legs come along. Feet drop to the sides, arms open wide, kind of like a starfish. On every exhale, you tell yourself, relax. Eyes close. Fully available to this moment. There are sounds and distractions and thoughts and sensations. And it's all okay because you have cultivated a sense of inner smoothness. You're not resisting. And even if you are frustrated, that's okay too. It's all welcome because it's all here in your experience. Take a couple moments just to be with yourselves here. 
connecting with the earth and nothing to do, nowhere to go. Well done. Let's take a community breath. So let the last exhale go, go, go. And when you have nothing left in your lungs, take a deep, refreshing, life bringing inhale. And on the exhale, begin to bring small movement into your body. Anything that feels good. Maybe a nice stretch overhead, like you're just waking up. And indeed, we are always waking up to this moment. Rolling over onto your favorite side. And when you're ready, pressing back up into easy seat, finding your aligned spine, eyes closed again, hands wherever is comfortable. And how are you? Hands come to heart, hands come to the third eye between your eyebrows. Take a deep breath in, exhale, gentle bow forward as you open your eyes. Here I offer you namaste and my sincerest gratitude for your practice, sharing your present moments with my present moments. <laughs> and I hope you have a lovely rest of your Saturday. I'll see you at 10 a.m. next Saturday, hopefully. And uh, yeah, reach out if you have any questions, comments, concerns, compliments. I'll see you all very soon.